Alrighty, I think we're all set. Um, hello, Deanna. Um, I am very happy to be talking with you today. Um, just for our audience, is there any way you could just give us a little brief background on yourself and what your profession is and stuff like that? Good evening. Um, thanks for reaching out to me, Christina. Um, my name is Deanna. I'm an emergency room nurse, um, or at least emergency room trained with about 30, 35 years experience in emergency medicine. Um, so I started out as an EMT on the ambulance and kind of worked my way up and became a nurse. Um, so I have a fair amount of experience. Perfect, exactly what we need. Um, Alrighty, so I'm just going to ask you a few questions, um, mainly about mental health um, in the elderly community. Um, overall, if I were to just say mental health and um, just like the pros and cons um, within your work environment, what would you tell us? Well, unfortunately, in emergency medicine, um, most of what you deal with is crisis. Um, at least the people that you can help immediately or placement with the elderly in particular. So um, with dementia and things like that, it's usually they get evaluated and get placed into um, what's called a SNF or like a, a full skilled nursing facility. Um, and unfortunately it's usually, like I said, when people are in crisis, so younger people, um, or really any age, a person that comes in that's in crisis, that's suicidal, homicidal, um, delusional, you know, somebody that was like paranoid, schizophrenic, those are the patients that we often deal with in the emergency department. Right, you see kind of the bad end of things, you see kind of the negative side of mental health and its effects on individuals. Would you say that? I would, yes. But, um, you know, I've worked in other areas of nursing as well. And it just, mental health just seems to be kind of the bottom of the pickle barrel, especially here in Colorado, you know, to try to get help or to get person directed in the right place where they can get that help um, is pretty frustrating, I think. Right. And on the situation with uh, dementia and specifically the elderly community, um, basically, what would you say are the main concerns for you personally um, that you have observed when it comes to mental health um, and how the medical professionals handle the elderly? Um, I think that there's a, there is a lot of compassion um, and trying to get people placed in, in the right place and to try to help support family. But, um, you know, but it's often confusing and difficult for those people. Um, but there's, they've made a lot of changes in the last 20 years, I would say, to try to like kind of, uh, what's the word that I want, to really uh, make things, you know, easier for the elderly or to try to allow people to, you know, live in, um, like independently as long as possible. And then to try to honor whatever that individual wants or the family. Um, and you're supporting more the family when somebody really has dementia, the Alzheimer's type, right. if that's what you're talking about. Yes, yes. Um, that's, that's exactly what we're looking at. Um, now, just one final question here. Um, and that's basically, do you have any medical professional advice, any advice, um, mainly what society could do in general, maybe like three tips um, for the elderly uh, community and their mental health, especially during the current circumstances of the pandemic? Well, I mean, my number one concern always with the elderly is, you know, are they safe? You know, are they safe? to be at home by themselves? Um, are they able to care for themselves? Um, what is their mental health health like? Are they depressed? Are they anxious? And I think um, with regards to the pandemic across the board, um, we're seeing a huge spike and in increase in anxiety and depression, a huge spike in you know, alcoholism and uh, 
drug abuse with a huge spike in child abuse um, and just unhealthy habits in general, obesity, people have put on probably, you know, a solid 15 to 20 pounds, the average person. Um, but the elderly are kind of isolated because as our, as our um, society tries to protect and um, you know, care for those that we love. The elderly have been most susceptible to the coronavirus and um, have a negative outcome often, especially if they have a lot of other comorbidities. And so they're isolated, they're depressed, they feel like um, they don't have any reason to live or anything to offer. And, you know, that's not across the board. Some families and um, elderly have been able to connect, you know, quite well. But just in general, for a lot of the elderly that are, you know, in these skilled nursing facilities and family is not allowed to come in, and, you know, they don't have that IT uh, skill set. And so it's just really hard. And a lot of them have, you know, confusion, dementia of one type or another, you know. Right, right. They have hearing loss and vision loss. It's hard, it's hard to connect. So. Yeah, they're definitely specifically like as you said with the pandemic and such they're vulnerable in many aspects um i know that in my own research and my own personal experience i've seen a lot of uh elderly who have really struggled with um lack of social connections um especially Absolutely. in boulder being we're very social creatures in general but in boulder we're very outdoorsy interactive individuals so i've definitely seen it personally myself um, Absolutely. Yes. Well, I believe that is all for today, Deanna. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us virtually. Um, Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you for reaching out. I'm glad that I could offer a, a little bit of insight, maybe. Yes, yes, most definitely. We're definitely glad to hear it. Glad to get as many opinions and perspectives as we possibly can. Um, stay safe. And thank you. You too. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.